everybody and thank you for choosing to watch another video from this channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk about HPLC pop head and the problems that you may encounter during your HPLC run that it is related to the pop head. Uh, this video is not meant for calibration analysts since they already know about this component and their knowledge is much higher than what I know. Uh, it is meant for the analysts or chemists who are running HPLC and uh, they may face problem during the run and they don't know uh, what causes it and uh, hopefully uh, with watching this video you will learn more about the pump head and probably you start uh, doing some good practices to prevent the pump head to break down. Uh, what I have here is the Agilent HPLC 1100 pump head they call it pump head because it is sitting on top of a uh, motor uh, which doing the actuation and this motor pushes the these pistons that we see at the back and then they will make the flow going through the HPLC. Um, I will go uh, uh, talk about the component of this pump, pump head one by one and I will talk about the problems that you may uh, face that is related to these uh, components of this uh, piece. Uh, the, the, this part that we see at the bottom, they call it uh, active inlet valve. Uh, what it does is that it allows the mobile phase to go to the pump head but prevents it from coming out due to the back pressure. They call it active because it is a, this unit is able to uh, remove the air bubbles that it is going to the pump. Uh, this unit is a standard for all the Agilent HPLC 1100 but for the 1200 and 1260 series this become optional so you could buy the either active inlet valve or passive inlet valve. Uh, the other component that we see on the top, I'm going to remove these screws. Uh, the, the other unit that we see on the top, this is a passive outlet valve. Uh, what, it, what it does is that it will allow the mobile phase to leave the pump head but prevents it from coming back to the pump head due to the back pressure. Now the problems that you may see during the, uh, your HPLC run that relates to these two components is that as if you see let's say your HPLC pump is working but there is no flow into the system or if there is a flow the flow is some, somehow uh, fluctuates uh, and the, I will show you later in during this video uh, where, how we can remove these two components and fix it. Uh, the other part that I want to talk about is this purge valve and the purge valve is where the pump pushes the mobile phase out of the pump into your column and then you have this uh, valve that you can break it break the uh, break the flow and instead of going to your column it goes to the base let's say if you want to flush the system. Now the problem that you may face with, uh, that uh, relates to this part is that uh, you, s you notice unusually high back pressure uh, while you don't even have column on the system. So let's say if you remove the column you see back pressure of 5 bars but now recently you are noticing instead of 5 bars you, you see something like 50 bars and in some extreme cases even the pressure is so high that the pump shuts down. So the problem to fix it is that, again, I, I will show you that we have to take the part, this unit out and we have to replace the filter. So before I continue any further, let me start opening these uh, up and we see uh, what, which part I'm talking about. The, first of all, I have made them loose already. So in the, when you are going to remove these parts in your, your system, it will be much harder because this is this loose then you're going to have a uh, like a leak anyway so I will open up the inlet valve first and I will remove the outlet valve next again I have already loosened them up now as I said if you see that your pump is working but there is no flow uh, or if the flow is fluctuating is due to these valves and 
there's a part here for the outlet valve you have to I'm going to use a needle and you have to remove this uh, piece of plastic and there is a part inside that you need to replace so that's a replaceable part consumable you can buy them so you rebuilt your outlet valve for the inlet valve similar these put this away for outlet valve similarly you there is a piece here you remove it I should have had an applier this is and you replace this part so by replacing these two parts for your inlet and the outlet you're gonna have your problem resolved now next I'm going to talk about the purge valve I'm gonna open the purge valve up We have a gold seal here. You remove the gold seal, and there is a filter inside. So this filter will be uh, is a consumable. This is relatively clean, but this is what you want to do. So by replacing this filter, you will take care of your uh, problem with the back pressure. By replacing these two parts, you will uh, resolve your solve your. Uh, f uh, flow fluctuation or no flow at all. Now going back to the pump head, the problems that you may encounter that uh, relates to the pump head itself is leak, that your column starts to leak. Uh, my apology, your uh, pump starts to leak. Sometimes the leak is so severe that it will be uh, system shut down. Sometimes the uh, leak is not that severe but you notice that your peak in the chromatography start to shift uh, maybe you have two uh, peaks that are looting close by each other but this uh, you start losing the resolution and all these problems so the to, to resolve this issue or you have to replace the, the pump seals so the pump seals are worn out and they need to be replaced now to open this up you have to unscrew this thing it will become separated from one another these are my pump pistons and the pump seals are these black pieces inside so over time these pump seals start to lose the grip that they are supposed they are meant to grab the piston and the grip is gone and they start to leak so these are the consumable again and then they will by replacing it you will solve your uh, leak in the pump now let's talk about uh, some uh, bad practices that results in these components to break off, uh, break off or break down uh, faster than they are supposed to. Uh, the one that comes to my mind, uh, number one, is that if you're, you have a method that has high uh, buffer, a high concentration of buffer, or you have a method that uh, you have a buffer but then you uh, do the gradient and you ramp it up to a lot of organic and buffer start to precipitate inside the pump when you have these uh, crystals forming inside the pump is going to damage your uh, check valves you're going to damage your pump seals and you're going to see the system shutting down with no flow uh, major leaks and so on and so forth so the good practice is that try not to use the high uh, buffer in your mobile phase and try to um, not to ramp it up to too much organic and just uh, uh, keep an eye or keep in mind that you shouldn't have a condition that the buffers start to precipitate inside your pump. 
Uh, number two that comes to my mind is the the uh, solvents that you use, which is not compatible to your uh, pump. Uh, number one is the use of high concentration of THF. Uh, these pump seals that I'm showing you, the black ones, are not THF compatible. And um, you could, maybe your metal says use 1%, 2%, half a percent, whatever the percent THF is, over time it is going to uh, damage these pump seals and they start to disintegrate. And you, when you replace your filter, you realize that your filter is so black and this dark color actually coming from the pump seals that start to disintegrate due to your incompatible uh, mobile filter that you use. Uh, if you want to use like a high concentration of THF, you should go to Metrology and tell them to replace these pump seals with the THF compatible pump seals. So they will make your HVLC THF compatible. But these pump seals are not made for THF. Uh, number three that comes to my mind is that the methods that you have, uh, uh, the method that you run on LC and creates a lot of uh, like back pressure. In case of Agilent, I will say something in, in range of like, uh, 300 bars, 350 bars. Uh, although the Agilent will not break down, uh, shut off uh, until it reaches 400 bars, but operating the machine at 350 or anything above 350, it will put a lot of pressure on these components. And the one that break, uh, break down very rapidly is outlet valve. So the outlet valve is going to go bust. And then you realize you're running your method and every two months or three months, uh, you have to replace the outlet valve. Um, just a message to your younger chemists that they are, let's say these chemists are given a task to develop a method and they are struggling with the, let's say, two peak are coeluting, they want to have a separation or whatever. And they, they, during the struggle, they have the tendency to forget about their machine. And they end up uh, putting a lot of buffer, let's say, or they're putting a lot of pressure on the system. And although they may manage to make their method or develop their method, but this method that they develop would be the one that will uh, cause a lot of system breakdown over time. And I've seen these methods uh, too many too many times that they have a, let's say certain methods that causes the systems break down uh, very rapidly. So try to keep in, keep in mind your uh, equipment limitation, try to have these practices which is equipment friendly and uh, also mm, I would appreciate if you like this video, uh, push a like button, if you have comment or some something I made a mistake, you want to correct me. I really appreciate you write a comment and uh, take care of your HPLC and take care of yourself. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a good day. Bye.